Huge update in my West Virginia trophy deer antler case. Imagine that you're an experienced trophy deer hunter and the government wants your antlers that you took to the taxidermist. Uh, this buck right here was killed in West Virginia, uh, McDowell County. This buck here was killed in Statesville, North Carolina. So they go and they seize them without a warrant, and then they charge you with a bunch of hunting violations without actual evidence, hoping to coerce you into giving them the antlers. What do you do? Well, that happened to my client, David Kraft, as I detailed in a prior video, and he ended up getting them back after winning in court on the criminal charges. Both of these sets of antlers were at your taxidermist in North Carolina. That's correct, sir. And then the police or the game wardens or the DNR from West Virginia, they end up seizing them. That is correct. The update. Yesterday, we filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against the two West Virginia wildlife officers who went down to North Carolina and seized the antlers and charged my client. I'll post the lawsuit in full at the blog post linked in the description. If you watched the first video on this case, which I'll also link in the description, you know that one of the officers then proudly displayed the antlers in the media, accusing my client, David Kraft, of being an out-of-state poacher and boasting about the huge fines that he would receive for poaching trophy bucks in one of West Virginia's bow hunting only counties. And welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer channel, where we not only review civil rights abuses perpetrated by our government, but we also follow my day job of filing and litigating civil rights lawsuits to hold them accountable. If you want to get the entire backstory on this case, which is highly interesting, be sure to watch the first video. Again, I'll link it. This video is going to discuss the federal lawsuit that we just filed. Does a hunter have a constitutionally protected property interest in his trophy deer antlers? Of course he does. Is the government required to obtain a warrant to seize them from you? Well, that depends on the circumstances. Here, my client's antlers were seized from his taxidermist in North Carolina. So they traveled down from West Virginia in order to one, talk to my client, and two, to obtain the antlers as evidence that my client committed a crime. However, they brought with them from, North, from West Virginia no warrant or court order to North Carolina. Nor did they seek or obtain a, a warrant or court order from North Carolina courts. They just went down there and got them from the taxidermist. The problem is that the antlers didn't belong to the taxidermist, as they well knew. They didn't obtain consent from the owner. Could exceptions to the warrant requirement apply? We shall see. In the end, despite the media report where the government is displaying these antlers that they seized on February 8th of 2021, my client received them back on July 28th, 2022. He brought them to my office and they are definitely the largest deer antlers that I've ever personally seen or touched, that's for sure. If you watch the first video on this, you can hear my client discussing what happened in his own words. Then he asked me uh, if I had a picture of the deer. And I said, yes, I do. I showed it to him and uh, he congratulated me on it. Said, that's a nice deer. He said, are you going to get it mounted? Just days following the seizure of the antlers on February 26, 2021, Officer John D. Gills posed for a photograph holding the two sets of trophy deer antlers for a media story. The headline was, North Carolina man faces serious poaching charges in West Virginia. The media report alleged that Gills and his colleagues were able to come up with photographs and other physical evidence which proved both bucks were killed in West Virginia, as opposed to one of the bucks having been actually checked in as being killed in North Carolina. Gills further was quoted in the report about my client stating, Now North Carolina investigators are closely watching the West Virginia case, and the individual will likely face charges in his home state as well. By the way, that never happened. In the media report, Officer Gills noted that the two sets of deer antlers were of trophy status, and that the West Virginia legislature had recently increased so-called replacement costs for trophy bucks found to have been illegally killed. He stated that since these two are trophy status, the figures may ramp way up, and that the replacement cost for these two deer, he estimated in the range of $15,000. Gill called the potential fines a major weapon to deter poaching of big bucks in his county, implying that my client was poaching trophy deer in McDowell County, West Virginia. But after multiple hearings and requests for continuances from the government, on April 21st of 2022, all of the charges against my client were dismissed. On July 28th, 2022, the two sets of antlers were finally returned to Mr. Kraft. However, the capes attached to the antlers were ruined, affecting the ability of a taxidermist to properly mount the trophy antlers. The federal Section 1983 lawsuit includes two separate counts, both Fourth Amendment violations. 
one for malicious prosecution, and one for the unlawful seizure of the deer antlers, which includes not only the initial seizure, but also holding them against the will of the true owner for over a year. Mr. Kraft was originally charged with two counts of hunting without permission, two violations of illegal possession of wildlife with enhanced penalties, two violations of hunting without a class Y permit, one count of hunting after the legal limit, one count of allowed one deer with bow, whatever that is, and hunting without an S stamp, again, whatever that is. So did any of that make sense to you? Well, that's part of the problem. The point here is that the government has basically taken the fun, all the fun, out of hunting and fishing. It takes three lawyers to even figure out how to go hunting or fishing in this country without breaking one of the hundreds or even thousands of wildlife laws. For over a year, my client was forced to travel multiple times from North Carolina to McDowell County, West Virginia for court hearings on this. Five times, I believe. These hearings kept getting continued because the government was asking for more time. At one point, representing to the court and to the parties that they were waiting on DNA testing. However, no DNA test results ever materialized, nor did any evidence that DNA test results were ever requested. We've alleged in the count for malicious prosecution, which is basically just a type of Fourth Amendment violation, basically a seizure of your person, making you go to court and be prosecuted, and so on. That the government never had any evidence against Mr. Kraft in the first place, but was just trying to coerce him into giving up the antlers or taking a plea deal. But he didn't. He demanded a jury trial. When the time came for that jury trial, in April of 2022, where the government would finally be forced to present their evidence against him, what did they do? They dropped the charges. So the charges were dropped in April of 2022, and then on July 28th of 2022, David got his antlers back. And when he got them back, again, the capes were ruined, so they couldn't be properly mounted. The second count in the lawsuit asserts that the Fourth Amendment was violated by the unreasonable seizure of the deer antler. Now, here's an important issue in this case, and to this case. So it's not just about the initial seizure of these deer antlers, but it's about the retained possession of them afterwards in West Virginia for almost a year and a half. The Supreme Court of the United States has held that the Fourth Amendment regulates all interference with an individual's possessory interest in the property, not merely the initial acquisition acquisition of possession of that property. This means that the government continues to violate the Fourth Amendment so long as they have your stuff and they refuse to return it. Now, this issue comes up in the theft cases, like the recent video I did where the parole officers stole $6,000 during what was otherwise a lawful search of a parolee's home. Or the case from California where the officer stole $225,000 and ended up getting qualified immunity from the Ninth Circuit. That case was Jessup versus City of Fresno. So no doubt that same issue will probably come up in this case. As always, thanks for watching. You can find more detailed information on this at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. I'll post the relevant case documents to the blog as we go, including the full lawsuit right now. This will probably be one of those cases where people will be interested to follow along as we go. So please make sure to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and you want to follow along. I also have a lot of other exciting stuff in the works that you won't want to miss. Freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.